Hello crafty friends and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some quick and easy crafting with Baker Ross. This first project is going to use some pencil cases and stamps and I'm actually going to use paint to stamp with these onto the fabric. Now I found that Baker Ross sells a product that I hadn't heard of before. It is this product right here and it will turn your paint into fabric paint. All you need to do is mix together equal parts of the fabric medium with your paint. I'm using a syringe just to measure out the exact same milliliters of both the fabric medium and then each of the colors of paint, but you could do this with a spoon or whatever you have on hand. I just had this on my desk so it was really quick and easy to use and I rinsed it out in a cup of water to avoid contamination between the colors. And I'm using this paint palette, which I also picked up from Baker Ross. I'll try and remember to leave a list of everything used in the description below. So do take a look there if you're curious about any of these products. And if something's missing, give me a shout and let me know. So once I've thoroughly mixed the fabric medium with the paint, I'm going to paint it on top of these stamps just to color them in exactly as I would like them to appear. So I'm using this rose shape and I've covered the rose in red and the leaves in green. So pretty standard. And then I've inserted a piece of scrap paper inside of my fabric pencil case. And this is just to protect from any bleed through of the paint. I'll go ahead and peel that up and you can see it leaves behind that rose design. I wanted to increase the intensity of the color and also fill in a couple spots that didn't transfer absolutely perfectly. So I did go back with my paintbrush and fill those in, but it was a really great way to get this rose design without me having to worry about drawing it from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and use that same stamp again in the other corner just to add two rose designs onto this pencil case and I think this is a really fun project. You can see how easy it is to go ahead and transfer those designs and as usual with me once I started I couldn't stop so I actually used quite a few of these pencil cases and a couple of the different stamps. You could definitely also do this freehand which um I'm not great at, let's be honest, but I think this kind of looks cute. I added some blue clouds. I know the clouds should be white, but rather than paint the whole sky blue and leave the cloud space empty, I decided to go for some blue clouds and then a nice bright yellow sun. And I also added in some grass and some flowers at the bottom. And I think this is a really fun project. You do need to set this paint. So once it's fully dry, you do have to iron over the top of the surface to completely fix it to your fabric. But all of the instructions are on that fabric medium bottle. And I just think it's a really great way to stretch your supplies. With just one additional product, you can convert your paints into fabric paints. Okay, so moving on to this next project, here I have these self-adhesive buttons. I'm again using that paint tray just to sort them by color. It is so visually appealing to me seeing them all sorted by color like that. And I'm also working on top of a canvas. Here I'm taking a pencil and I'm just gonna outline the top of that bowl because we're going to make a rainbow. So I'm placing a ruler across my canvas just to make sure that this is nice and even. And then I'm just adding those self-adhesive buttons onto the canvas in rainbow order. So I have of course sped this up. It's pretty self-explanatory what I'm doing here. I'm peeling off the backing on the buttons and then pressing them onto the canvas. You could definitely go ahead and paint the canvas. I think that would look really fun if you painted that, maybe like a blue wash in the background to represent the sky, or maybe like an ombre, like a pink to purple, or whichever will fit in with the room that you're placing this in. And then I added just a button hello at the bottom to fill in that space underneath. And I think it's a really fun, bright piece of button art for springtime. Now this next project is maybe my favorite. I've got some painting rocks, which I picked up from Baker Ross. With hindsight, I probably should have got the white ones. I'll be honest, I didn't realize they sold the plain white ones. So I ordered these more natural looking ones, which is a shame because I'm covering it up with paint. Now I'm painting these rocks in different shades of green because I want them to be cactus. I'm going to convert these into little rock cactus plants, which is brilliant because they will last and there is no risk of me not giving them enough sunlight or not watering them enough. They will be absolutely fine because they are rocks. And I think rock painting is a really fun and therapeutic activity. There's something about painting on that smooth surface of a rock that's really relaxing. So I went ahead and painted the rocks front and back with two layers of this paint. And while it was drying, it was time to add detail to these terracotta pots. 
These came in a set again from Baker Ross and I'm using the Baker Ross paint pens to add details. And you can see here, I was just holding the pencil in place. I'm actually balancing it on a eraser just to give it some height. And then I spun around the pot so it would create a nice straight line. And then I'm just gonna use this white pen to add some dashes and detail along the side of the pot. I think this is a really fun and easy way to add some decoration to an otherwise plain terracotta pot and it doesn't take away from that beautiful terracotta design. So I'll show you one of the pots here. I did end up decorating three because I'm going to create a little collection of three. Now I'm not doing anything particularly special, I'm just adding the white where I want it. You will notice that as it dries it fades slightly against this terracotta. I could have layered it up but I was really happy with how it turned out. It almost has like an aged effect to it and I think that looks really pretty. This is probably the most intricate of the designs that I created. For the other two, I masked off sections and then painted white. Again, just using the paint pen, the sections that I wanted to be white and then peeled away the masking. You'll see in the final pictures, I did have a little bit of bleed through on those horizontal stripes, but again, I kind of liked the, the distressed feel that it gave this. It definitely doesn't have to look perfect. So once I was happy with my pots, it was time to move on to adding some detail to the cactus plants. Again, using the paint pens, I used a mixture of white and green and added either lines or dots onto my little cactus plants. I definitely think this is something that you could get your nieces, your nephews, your kids involved with, and I think it would be a really fun activity to do together. And then you'd maybe have something to remind yourselves of them for like your desk, um, like little desk ornaments. I think that's a really nice idea. So here's how everything looks before I assemble them. To attach the rocks to the plant pots, I added some floral foam inside of the pots. And this just gave me something to fill up the space and also press the rocks into. You can see it kind of holds them in place. And then to cover up the, um, the gap that's left, I'm just using some small river rocks. These are actually designed to be used in an aquarium. They're really inexpensive. And I think they finish off this project in a really nice way, just adding that gravel look to this plant pot design. So there you have it, my little terracotta cactus plants. Moving into the fourth project, I'm using some felt and some hair clips to make some hair accessories. These are very sweet and I'm sure my nieces will definitely want to wear these in their hair. I can imagine it now. Next time I get to see them, I'll have to make sure I've got a collection of these for them to, uh, to have a play with. So here I'm using a pound coin and just drawing around it to get the shape that I need. I need a single circle in that yellowy colored felt and then four that are connected in the white because I'm going to make a daisy shape. So here, once I've drew around my template, I'm just going to trim away the excess. This is a really easy project and you could make a whole bunch of these in an afternoon, just sitting watching the TV as you're crafting and they come together really easily. So here I'll just snip away the excess and then once I have everything cut, I just need to layer it up with some adhesive and then I'll go ahead and stick that down to these hair clips. These blank hair clips come in a giant pack from Baker Ross, so I've definitely have a whole bunch of these as well as the felt to make a collection of different designs for the girls to play with. So now for this final project, I'm using some paint and some wooden bunting pieces that I'm going to decorate to create a springtime banner. So here I'm using the paints and a foam paintbrush just to add a generous layer on top of these wood pieces. These wood pieces take the, the paint really well and you can see just how vibrant and fun that paint looks on top of there. So once I was happy with the painting, I painted the red, yellow, green, and blue, just to kind of have that rainbow vibe. And then it was time to move into decorating. So once the pieces were completely dry, I'm again using my trusty paint pens to add some decoration. I took some inspiration from the stamps that I used earlier in the video to create some flower patterns on top of these pieces. Some I did completely freehand and some I actually used the stamp to give me a template and I would stamp down using some ink that I had in my craft collection and it wasn't quite as vibrant as using the deco pens so I'd go over the top of that just colouring it in with the deco pens to really make it pop. 
Once I was happy with my decorating, I moved on to adding a sentiment and I'm using these wooden letter pieces that I've painted white so they'll really pop against that colorful background. And I'm just using some PVA glue to attach those and it spells out the word spring. I think this is a really fun banner and you could definitely do this for any occasion or any season and just switch it up to how you like. You could even paint the front in one way and the back in another way so you have like a reversible sign. I think that's a really fun way to get like two for one out of this project. But there is my springtime bunting. I hope you've enjoyed these five quick and easy springtime craft projects. If you're new here, you can go ahead and hit the like button and ring the bell if you wish to be notified every time I post a new video. That is all for me today. I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye for now.